Well, ho, 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 it is time to talk about misunderstood mistletoe. I know we're used to mistletoe at the holidays as a decoration, but this has so much more going on for it than a decoration. So today, I'd like to share a little basics with you about mistletoe. Address a couple of misnomers about mistletoe, and then share with you all the great benefits of mistletoe. Hi, I'm Elise. I'm glad you stopped by. I'm in Zone 9B. I grew up with mistletoe. We always had mistletoe in, toe in the trees. We, you know, it's something I love. It's kind of like a home thing for me when I see mistletoe. It's basics, okay? About a thousand varieties, depending upon what article you read. Now, in our area, it, the uh, native variety that we grow is Phordendrum serotinum, or used to be called Leucarpum. But anywhere from 250 to 1,000 varieties. Common names are leafy oak and American oak here in our area. But each variety can have its own common names. It grows everywhere except Antarctica. The sweet zone is zones 5 through 9, so it doesn't like anything really, really frigid, cold, or anything really, really hot. In Greek, the scientific name means thief of the trees. But I also have read that it also stands for Robin Hood of the trees. And the word mistletoe in early Anglo-Saxon means mistel meaning dung or poop, and tan, meaning a stick or a twig. So, this is a poop stick. <laughs> Kids might get a good kick out of that. The American oak is native to us, or the American oak mistletoe is native to the southern part of the United States and most of the United States. Australia has over a hundred varieties of native mistletoe, if not more. Our variety likes to grow on deciduous trees. Big, tall, old deciduous trees. Trees that drop the leaves. So, in the autumn and the winter, you'll see these great big clusters of mistletoe. And they're up there in the very top, taking in nutrients, taking in moisture, taking in what sun that they have in their area. Oaks, laurels, sycamores, wild cherries, elms, and more. I've even seen folks on YouTubes talking about deliberately seeding mistletoe on apple trees. Long, rich history. There's records of mistletoe going back to antiquity. Its symbology, it means hope, peace, renewal, love, protection, healing. Now, I know the protection works because one of the things it's supposed to protect against is werewolves, and I haven't ever seen a werewolf come anywhere near my home. Imagine in the 1500s, 1600s, it was dark and cold and it's winter and you've run out of food and you walk out and the sun's just cresting, and it's in this tree, and here's this beautiful clump of green mistletoe. It gives you renewal. It gives you hope. Mistletoe is one of the most revered plants in Europe. It is used for ritual, for spiritual rituals, for religious applications. It was greatly revered and respected. All right, let's talk about some misnomers. That is poison and it will kill you. If you touch this piece of mistletoe, if I smell it, if I accidentally ingest a berry, I'm going to die. Well, that is not correct. Mistletoe does have toxics in them. All varieties of mistletoe are toxic. The European varieties are a little more toxic than the American varieties, or the North American varieties. And yes, they can make you sick. 
but I check CDC, I check Harvard Med, I check several other sites. There's no actual confirmed deaths. There's reported deaths, but they weren't confirmed as actually being caused by mistletoe. It will make you sick. And if you have a, a repressed immune system or you have other medical conditions going on, you may end up in the hospital. From what I have read, most cases just gives you severe gastrointestinal problems and they tell you just to wait it out. Maybe take some uh, medicinal products for it and wait it out. So it's not going to kill you. Yes, you still want to use some discretion. You, you know, there's no need to eat mistletoe. Teach your children about the plant. Okay, second misnomer. It's going to kill your tree. Well, it will not kill your tree. And here's why. The first thing, mistletoe is a hemiparasite which means it does connect to a host but it still takes in its own nutrients from the air its own moisture its own nutrients its own sugars so it can produce sugars it can produce chlorophyll by itself it still does sap in to some of the nutrients of the tree it is not to the benefit of the mistletoe to kill its host if the host dies, the mistletoe dies. And in fact, there was an article written by Pinellas County, Florida's Agricultural Research Center that in fact, the mistletoe will give nutrients back to its sick host to help the host get well. I think that was kind of neat. All right, so how does mistletoe attach to the tree? Well, when the little berries get ripe, on this particular variety, because again, there's so many varieties, it's all different, somehow the little berry attaches to the host tree. And as it grows, it's going to put down like little feelers down into the tissue until it taps in and can get a secure hold. And where it attaches, this growth is called a hostrum different on many varieties. They attach differently on different varieties. But on this particular variety in North America, it attaches by this hostrum. So this is the laurel tree, the branch. This is the mistletoe, this whole thing. Now, this also is what makes it kind of hard to prune it off. The easiest thing to do is to come back behind it, between it and the tree, and cut your limb off. But there's no need to. It's not going to kill your tree. Now, if your tree is young and tender and a large colony forms on some of the smaller branches, you get some heavy winds, rain, storms. Yes, the branches might fall down, but they might have fallen down anyway, even without the mistletoe. If the tree is sick, again, the sapping of the nutrients might, might not help it. But there has to be another reason the tree got sick in the first place. Now, these are all current findings, all current research. It hasn't always been that way. And they changed their minds. So, anyway, the current research right now is it does not kill the tree. I know it doesn't from my own personal experience. Uh, I grew up with mistletoe. I have seen trees grow for decades and decades and decades with mistletoe in them. Never has hurt the tree. Never. So that's a couple of misnomers about mistletoe. All right, the good part. Let's talk about why it is so good for the ecology of this uh, planet, for the ecology of your particular garden. It feeds two to three hundred different types of birds. They eat it, they nest in it, they pollinate it, they spread the seeds, they propagate it. 
but it also feeds mammals, squirrels, rabbit, deer, porcupine. And in fact, one article said that porcupines really, really love mistletoe. So, all kinds of squirrels, chipmunks, skunks. I don't know if horses eat it, and I don't know if a cow would eat it, but deer eats it. Again, fantastic plant. It is used for nesting, for hiding, for perching. Birds do double duty. They eat the berries, they spread the berries, and they help to propagate the plant. They also help with pollination. Although there are moths and butterflies that are attracted to the plant, and some do use mistletoe as a host plant. When the little berries on this particular variety gets ripe, they turn white and they'll have a viscous goo on them. So when the bird comes down and eats the berry, it can either go through its digestive system, depending upon the a bird, and he poops it out, and hopefully he poops it out into the little crook somewhere on a tree. Or there are birds who have specialized digestive systems who can eat it, eat the berry. The uh, berry goes through the digestive system really fast. He poops the seed out. Again, hopefully it's going to hit on a crook or somewhere where it can attach to a tree. Another way the birds do it is that little goo will cause the berries to stick to the beaks and stick to their feet. And they'll go to a tree limb and they'll scrape their beak on the tree limb or their feet to get the berry off. And then it will stick. So birds really play a very important part. But again, loads of other animals. Loads of other animals. Another thing about mistletoe, it makes really good fertilizer. Really good. There's a Dr. Watson who is uh, a premier expert in mistletoe in Australia. I read about him in the Smithsonian. He says that mistletoe is like a dripping tap of fertilizer. So when all this debris breaks down and drops down to the floor, and decays, it feeds insects, fungus, microbes, enriches the soil. And they've made many, many studies about that. Another thing that Dr. Watson did, they went through and removed lots of the mistletoes from the trees. Went back and did a study. The trees that had mistletoe left in them had 25% more birds. So that's a lot. And I read an article or watched actually on YouTube um, that in some cities they were deliberately seeding trees with the mistletoe because they found the trees were healthier with the mistletoe in them. Neat, huh? So fertilizers, great for food, great for the wildlife, the pollinators. Humans shouldn't eat it. Dogs and cats shouldn't eat it. But animals do. Loads of medicinal properties if you want to look into that. Just loads of medicinal properties and that's all I'll say. So, to propagate it. You'll take one of these little berries when it's ripe. You squish it and you put it into a crook of a tree. Some folks put it underneath, they'll scratch it a little bit. Now, it takes a long time, so be patient. This year, I am going to try, I've got a couple little oak trees that I can actually reach. So I am going to try that. So as you can see, loads of uses. Food, fertilizer, nesting, perching, hiding. Even fish have been observed to jump up and try to get the berries if the water level was high. And all I'm doing is making a little bow right now. I grew up with mistletoe hanging in the house at Christmas. So I have very fond memories of it. 
all you do is take a couple of little branches, wrap a pretty ribbon around it, get as fancy as you want, and just hang it up. The custom of kissing under mistletoe started in Europe about 1700s, although mistletoe goes all the way back to antiquity. It came to the Americas about the early 1800s. So here you have this pretty little bough of mistletoe, and people sell these online. They usually wait, if this is the variety they're using, until they turn white. Now, I might take this inside because I read an article that said it helps you sleep. <laughs> so you hang this up on the wall or somewhere around in your bedroom and it will help you sleep. You know, I'll try anything except chemicals. So that's a little bit about mistletoe. Really long, rich history, very revered, a spiritual plant, uh, does not kill your tree, will not kill you. Um, I know, okay folks, there's always exceptions, right? Always, always, always. Do your research and look into it. Educate yourself, educate your children. Makes fantastic school projects. Great again for the wildlife, for the pollinators, fertilizer. All of this is going to go into a bucket and I'm going to make some green biomass liquid fertilizer. Neat. All right. I think that's about it. Although I could talk for quite a little bit more about mistletoe. Look into it, folks. Extremely interesting plant. Till we speak again, have a fantastic day.